Okay, let's get started. This is gonna be fun. today the 18th feels like we were just here we were just here just yesterday right good afternoon everyone my name is Michael Markowski and today we're going to be making a painting based on one of the most inspiring humans to ever grace the earth we're talking about Nelson Mandela, and um, you know it's it's sort of like he's one of these persons that uh, you, you, almost is is beyond myth or or beyond he transcends his human form and becomes some kind of mythic figure uh, and. You know, it's it's just it's almost hard for me. I'm just as I'm thinking about it, it's like wow, I, I I shared the earth for a period of time with this incredible person, and uh, um, and hopefully his spirit lives on through many many other people who've been inspired by him. So let's uh, let's launch right into this because today we're going to make a portrait of Nelson Mandela. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you the image and how to, how to transfer it onto a canvas. So let's look at this right now. So here's an outline of the photograph that we're going to paint. So this is the image that we are going to recreate on canvas. And I've done an outline of it. And so here's the outline. And I'm going to show you where you can get the outline for free. If you look down below, there's a Dropbox link, and in that Dropbox link, you'll see a bunch of other paintings here. Now, th this uh, show, if you've never seen me before, and, and the, about two-thirds of the people who, who end up watching my episodes have never seen me before, have, never, have no idea what it's about, and if you're watching this after it was recorded live, you may want to just jump right to the very end. Take a look at the painting and... I'm knock on wood, <laughs> you go like, wow, that's really cool. I'm going to want to learn how to paint that. And then you can go right back to the beginning, catch up to where we are right now. And then you can watch me paint the painting in real time uh, in a manner that is hopefully accessible to even beginner artists. And you can see me, all the decisions that I make along the way, and you can follow along. And here are a bunch of other paintings that we've made in this Paint the New series. And they're all based on photographs that I have found uh, online and are usually intended to be relatively topical uh, to celebrate things that are going on in the news. Now, some people, if these are images that are not of interest to you, there is an entire other series that I do usually on Tuesdays and often <laughs> Thursdays these days. Uh, where I paint famous paintings throughout art history. And you can see there's the Mona Lisa and Salvador Dali, Tom Thompson, etc. Here's a Spider-Man one coming up in a couple, or next week, we're doing a whole week of Vincent van Gogh. Um, and so there's lots of uh, content for you to do. And in fact, you can see there's a whole bunch of other paintings coming up, and I've, here's all of the outlines for all these other paintings that we are going to do. I'm super excited. That's really cool. It feels so neat to think like, wow, this is going to be 30 more paintings over the next month, right? Oh, July and August are going to be busy times. So anyway, uh, what you can do is uh, you can... Let's go back into the Paint the News folder here and look at Nelson Mandela. And in this folder, you're going to th see three different files. There's two versions of the tracing. One's a JPEG, one's a PDF, and then you have the original image. All right, so 
Um, how about let's trace this image and then we're going to talk a little bit about who Nelson Mandela was so we can just get this whole process started as quickly as possible. So once you've got your image, and you can use uh, your printer at home, you can use uh, you know, your printer at work. This is just regular photocopy paper. Actually, I print mine out on a little bit heavier stock just because I like thicker paper, <laughs> but uh, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna put a little bit of tape down. This one doesn't really matter if it's off to the side or crooked or anything like that because we don't have what we call a horizon line, right? Like where the sky meets the ground in the back. And then what I use is some carbon paper. And I got this actually from our local dollar store, but you should be able to find it at any art supply store uh, or fabric stores often will sell this. And so I'm gonna move that off to the side. And you can also see that I can reuse the carbon paper many times. This might be the last time I can probably use it. And this would probably be maybe the 15th time, 20th time. So I'm just gonna take the carbon paper, put it down underneath here. And I often will use a colored pencil, like a red or a blue to, to do all of the outlining. That way I can see what lines I've done and what lines I haven't done. And we're gonna paint over let me see you. I always forget to sand this down. <laughs> I always forget to do that. So let's. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna give this a little this canvas just a quick sanding with some 220 grit sandpaper. makes this surface just a little bit smoother. So let's put this down roughly in about the same place we had it before. The likelihood that those two lines are going to match, the line that I just started is going to match up is just about zero. In fact, let's just take a quick little look and see how close that was. Ah, look at that, that was pretty darn close. <laughs> Closer than I thought I would could ever be. And then I'm just gonna really quickly go around here. You can see I'm not even going into all the nuance of his hair. It's really just to help me get the composition started. To get a, you know the, the eyes in the roughly the right place and the nose in roughly the right place because those things are gonna help make this portrait uh, look like Nelson Mandela, right? So that's gonna help tremendously. Um, if you're interested in drawing all of this on your own without using the template that I've provided, you can certainly do that. If you find that's really difficult, well, I did do an entire 40 episode long how to draw course, which is all free here on YouTube for you to watch at your convenience. And I know a lot of the people that take this painting course say that the drawing class has been really helpful for them, um, you know, both to help them uh, draw for these painting classes, but just on their own when they're drawing um, to get more confidence when it comes to sketching. So here's these eyebrows. His eyebrows are fairly um, light, so uh, I'm going to draw them in a little bit darker, but when we paint over it, all of that will disappear. Okay. See, that's why I got two pencils ready. I knew that I would break one along the way. Okay, almost done here. Just get a his shirt in position. This collar. We'll continue the collar onto the bottom part of the page after I pull the template off. 
And I am going to just outline this checker pattern plaid because uh, that will help give the fabric a sense of, uh, you know, some folds going on here. Usually, uh, what I've now that I've got that big stack of printouts already ready to go, what I'll do is just film myself tracing a bunch of those out, and then I can just play them for a couple minutes at the beginning of every episode. Okay, so you can see, like you know, the little the 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 pupil of the eye didn't really come across. That doesn't matter, right? Because we're gonna be um, painting over all this in sh just a couple seconds. So I'm just clean up along the way. I would save the, your outline. Maybe you can do another painting if you want. Like, let's say this one doesn't turn out to your satisfaction. Well, you've got this ready to go. You can just tra trace it once again onto new canvas. You can make 50 of them using my template, right? Okay, put that away. We'll have to resharpen those pencils. I always like to clean as I go here. I just started reading this uh, book, Green Lights, by Matthew McConaughey. That a bunch of my students at Emily Carr, where I teach, recommended it to me <laughs> randomly. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm always open to suggestions. And I was just reading it, and one of the things, he's into bumper stickers, and he says, uh, clean up so you can get dirty. I thought, ah, I like that. Clean up so you can get dirty. Um, and it's true, right? If you've got a nice, your working station is is kind of organized, it allows you to get really dirty without getting confused, right? Like you're, um, because you've got this area kind of cleared, right? Okay. So usually what I do, um, or at least what I've been doing over the past maybe four months or so is almost exclusively putting a warm yellow down as my foundational color to the painting. And there's lots of different ways to go about this, but I think this is um, probably the easiest way to get a painting started. Uh, traditionally, artists would probably have like a, a darker earthy red like almost a brown really that they would put on the canvas at first and we could do that if you have a brown you could put a brown down um i just think it's for a beginner course like this it's a lot easier for people just to begin with your warm yellow and really the difference is there there is a difference um but for the vast majority of beginner or even intermediate artists, it's it's going to be negligible. The main difference you would notice would, would ultimately actually be that the colors that we paint over top of it will appear to be a little bit brighter and to kind of have a little bit of a warm glow, almost like a little bit of an Instagram filter, right? Um, but otherwise, it's not going to radically affect your painting. I'm assuming you paint it in the in the way that I paint it, of course. Okay. I also like to get the edges of my painting in here. You see me painting the sides. It's almost like a, a little nod to anyone who decides to take a little bit closer look and look at the sides of the painting. And they can see like the the color of the canvas as it was underneath everything. And the other little trick that it might do if you don't paint over the edge with other colors is it'll kind of give the painting a little bit of glow on the wall, right? Assuming you're, it's not framed, it's just leaning on your bookshelf or something. It'll be a little bit of like a yellow glow coming around the sides. Okay. And that looks pretty good. Don't worry too much about streaks or anything. And we're going to paint over all of this in just a few minutes. Okay. Oh, lots of comments in the chat. 
Um, oh, somebody had an accident here. Let's take a look at that in a second. Um, okay. Uh, it's actually cooler in here than it's been in a while, which is really exciting because uh, it's been so hot here in Vancouver, Canada, where I am, that it's actually affected the, the speed of the paint. The paint was drying much faster than usual. We set some all-time records for heat over the past month here. So... Maybe while this is drawing, let's just take a quick second to take a look at this great uh, person and a few other little housekeeping things. I want to let you know there's a Facebook group just for people who are watching me right now. And you can upload your version of today's photo to the Facebook group. And usually once a month, uh, every five weeks or so, I do an episode where I take a look at your art and give you feedback on it. In fact, I just did that yesterday. So if you're interested to see what that looks like, you can watch yesterday's episode. Um, and it's also really cool because we see art made by people who are watching right now, maybe some of them are right here, and who are working on their own artwork. Because that's really, when you're taking a class of anything, whether it's a painting class like this, or a violin class, guitar class, a ballet class, whatever class, you ultimately want to be able to do things on your own, right? You want to learn the skills so that you can express yourself rather than just reproducing existing images. Um, it is, however, I would say, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm teaching using existing images is it's the easiest way to kind of get started, right? Uh, and also, you can create an image that uh, is recognizable, and therefore it gives you that satisfaction of like, oh, I can make that photo look like this. So, um, anyway, here's this is the image that we're going to be using today. Um, and this image was on the Biography uh, Channel's website. And one thing I just want to acknowledge, that this image was created by somebody else, right? This is, it's owned by Getty Images. And what I do is I just copy the name of the photographer. And then we can just kind of look at their website here. See, like, gorgeous photographs. Come on, look, we have a navigation bar in here. <laughs> I don't know. But here's their Instagram, anyway. So we can take a look at some of their images on their Instagram. Very cool. I love some of that. Look at that guy. That's a cool style. That is a cool dude. Look at that. Th a three-tie outfit. I don't know. I think I'm going to take that style and adopt it for myself. I love that. That is really hip. Um, I love these socks. Anyway, really cool photograph. So I strongly recommend that you follow this photographer, just like I just did here, because he's responsible for taking this great, iconic photograph of Nelson Mandela. And let's just take a quick look at his biography. Nelson Mandela, born in 1918 and passed away in 2013. And I, I forgot that he, he, you know, it's, you know, maybe only what's that, eight years ago that he passed away. I, I, I for some reason, I thought he had died earlier than that. Um, but what a long life, like almost a hundred years old by the, how old was he? Does it say how old he was when he finally passed? What's that, 95 years old, I guess? That would have been around there, right? Um, so maybe a lot of people might know him as the former president of South Africa, and he did serve from 1994 to 1999. Um, but before he was the president of South Africa, he was in jail in South Africa for 27 years. And it was only in 1991 that, or 1990, that he was released from jail Basically, as a move by the, the 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 president at the time, de Klerk, because there was so much anger and unrest and the 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 very real threat of a civil war breaking out in South Africa, that uh, and people demanding his release. I mean, they've been de demanding his release since the moment he got arrested, um, but uh, it sort of got to the point where 
the only thing that would stop the country from dissolving into outright war was the release of this person who was all who was uh, thrown in jail really um, f uh, without much cause. Now there is some debate. Uh, mostly, he was a uh, peaceful protester, but after generations of Black South Africans were uh, oppressed by the very small white minority in South Africa, he did towards the end. By the time he got arrested, was advocating for more violent protests, but it's hard to dispute. Uh, it's you know anyone who thinks that that wasn't justified. It's it's hard not to imagine you and your family and generations of your family uh, living under this uh, uh, oppressive dictatorial regime, right? So anyway, uh, he spent 27 years in this small jail. You can go to South Africa. You can tour where the, the his jail cell was uh, uh, originally. Um, let me see. I don't, I don't know how we'll go into his biography as we go here. There's lots of links I've put in the description below about Nelson Mandela Day, which is today's Nelson Mandela Day. Um, and really, Nelson Mandela Day is a time for us to not only celebrate the achievements of this great person, but also to, it's a call to action for, for people, you know, myself and anyone else watching, to take up the cause to promote diversity, to work towards peace, and really, the, I think the word that is most identified with Nelson Mandela is reconciliation. And what a better time for us to celebrate and work towards reconciliation than this moment right now, especially here uh, in Canada um, with the, the way that uh, our Indigenous people have been mistreated for hundreds of years. And the recent discoveries of, of um, uh, anonymous bodies of children buried next to churches uh, as part of residential schools throughout you know rural parts of Canada, which is a national tragedy and embarrassment uh, to all of us. Um, but you know, let's think about other like our friends down in the United States and the deep divide when it comes to politics between left and right and and the very real anger that exists there. I think today is, is a time to think about how we can come together and overcome some of our differences because really our what what our differences are are ultimately so much smaller than all of the things that bring us together. And I think that's one of the such the inspiring things about Nelson Mandela is you can imagine spending 27 years of your life in jail for for a quote unquote crime that is as far as like I would see is totally justified, right? And and so you I would come out of there just fuming with anger, most like the 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 the, the, the prime of his life uh, wasted away in a tiny jail cell. And rather than coming out with anger and wanting revenge and retribution on people, he decided what he wanted to do was to bring people together and to do as much as possible to, to forgive people that had wronged him and uh, in in the in the interests of 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 preventing further bloodshed and and just you know finding a finding a way for people to coexist anyway i got on my on my soapbox here but i just like i'm obviously I, i'm I, i'm passionate about this and and i i'm just deeply um affected by this person so let's just move on to the painting here because uh, i could talk about all this stuff all day so looks like this is is almost dry which is great so i'm just going to move it to the side for a second here and actually maybe even before we start painting let's just look at the image itself and think about how we're going to approach this so now we've got our yellow background and that's going to give the portrait and the whole image in general this nice warm kind of uh, glow to it which i think will be really really nice because he's got this beautiful smile right again like this is a guy who's seen so much hardships and and to smile like that is like it just make it puts everything 
for myself into perspective all the times where somebody at the grocery store has you know given me a uh, the the uh, stink eye or something and i'm like oh i'm so angry and then you think like this guy if this guy can smile right i have there's i it like i i got to get out of my own head and uh anyway so uh let me think here what we're obviously going to do, or what, I guess it's not obvious for, for everyone, but the way that I usually approach these paintings is work from the background to the foreground. So we're going to start here mixing this dark color in the background, and then I'm actually going to take that dark color and I'm going to start painting uh, some of the features of his face, just really quickly so that we don't lose them when we start putting in some of the skin tones on here. Okay, so um, let's mix this dark color. We've got to get some paint on the palette, of course, first. So let's do that. So I'm going to start out with my um, cool blue. And then I'm going to put my warm blue on here. And for those of you that are just joining me for the very first time, and you're wondering, okay, what's this whole warm blue, cool blue thing? I have explained this many other times <laughs> ad nauseum, um, and I, I did an entire 45 episode uh, intro to painting course that is has paintings that are, for the most part, much simpler than, than things I've been painting recently, um, which is intended to help give people who are starting out at the very beginning um, a, a, a good foundational structure for, for working. Um, but just as, and if you want to know what exactly the brands of paint we're using, there are just in the, there's links down below where you can go and, and, and buy the original paints yourself. But also if you have other brands of paint you've already bought and you don't want to go and buy these ones, uh, I'm not sponsored by anybody. I'm not getting any any money to use this particular paint. I just like it because it's it's basically the cheapest um, brand of paint that has the highest quality per for the money kind of thing. Biggest bang for the buck. Um, but if you have other paints, there are links. I think in the description below, or at least in the very first episode of that painting course, where you can find mix and match the other tubes of paint for with the brand that you might already have okay so let's mix a dark color that can go in the background of this image and it's if we just look at them side by side here we have this a really dark blue a dark cold blue because we want our our dark uh, or our background colors to recede uh, and the because they want that we want them to be in behind somebody right and the way to make colors go backwards in space optically is by using cold colors and that's why we have cold blue and cold yellow and cold red those colors work best for our background so let's uh let's start here we've you know start out with our cold blue but if we put this cold blue into that background well i mean it doesn't look anything like that dark color right so the obvious solution would be like okay well let's just squeeze out some black onto the, the palette and that would work the, the thing with just using black is is i tr i try not to use black whenever possible um at least for the background because Black is, is such a strong color that it wants to sit close to the foreground. If you think of a painting like a window, black wants to go right up to the window, right? So if we use black on this painting, we might want to use black on, you know, his eyes. You know, maybe the folds around his eyes and in between his lips and nostrils. You know, that kind of thing. That will make that part of his face come right up to the surface of the window to use that analogy so if we put it in the background which a lot of artists do and, and it kind of mostly works for most people and if you want to use it go ahead and you can see and you can try and you can upload it to the facebook group and we could talk about it but i would suggest instead of using black mixing a dark color here 
So let's take our cold blue. Actually, we'll probably use most of that. And then I'm gonna take some of my warm blue because uh, that's going to kind of neutralize some of the intensity of the cold blue. And then I'm going to go right across here to our warm red. And this is going to help us get a dark color really quickly. Okay. And by mixing a color that's almost on the opposite side of the color wheel from the cold blue, it's crossing through what we call the neutral core. So it's it's going to lose the intensity of that cold blue, pull it into the kind of the gray spectrum of things. Now, if you're mixing it like that, you might say, well, I like it, but it's kind of uh, a bit purpley. And that's, uh, you know, that's because we're mixing blue and red together. So adding a little bit of yellow, we'll just cut a bit of the purpleiness out of it and make it even more gray. So here's a nice dark color. We can always brighten this up if you want to add a little bit of white in there, but I think we'll be fine. So let's take this painting here and zoom in just oops, a little bit. And there's so many things in the chat there. I'll get to it in a second here once we get a little bit of uh, the painting in the background done. So I'm just going to brush all of this in. And I'm probably going to, I'm going to be doing two coats of paint, maybe this color, maybe a different color. I haven't even decided yet. Um, So don't worry about, oh, I can still see lots of yellow coming through. Like, oh no, what do I do, right? Don't worry about it, don't worry. You can see I'm just sort of doing this kind of, these jagged lines as I go around to get the hair. Now, I also don't want too many, um, too much texture on on these layers because it'll come through it'll, it might dry in ways that I, I might not even I might not like now or later I might not even notice them until later so I take a little bit of extra time just to kind of sometimes you got to look on an angle to see if that texture is built up in any way And also don't be afraid of going a little bit over your black lines. Um, because we'll be painting obviously the, the face over top of it. And you probably don't want to have too much yellow showing through. Okay. You'd see like I made a little quick change there because I didn't like the way that I had done the collar and just used my finger while the paint is still wet. You can just kind of smudge the paint away. <laughs> and you can see like I, there's little inevitable goofs and stuff that happen and you do your best. And there we go. I think we got that in nicely. So we'll let that dry. And as that's drying, I'm actually going to just transition to the to the face. Um, Okay, let's take a quick little bit of tea. Okay. So.
So let's go, I'm going to use a smaller brush, maybe one of my smaller brushes, because what I'm going to do now is take the same dark color that we mixed here that we just painted in the background, I'm not doing anything different to that color. And I'm going to take it and I'm just going to paint a little bit on the face here. So I'm just quickly going around just outline where the hairline is all right look it's kind of sloppy it's okay I'm just even you can see a little bit what I'm doing here uh, let's get this small forehead wrinkle in there Notice too, like how I'm holding the brush kind of a little bit higher. Uh, it just, you know, it, it one one of the reasons why I like to do that is it just sort of it it kind of almost puts me in the mental space of we're we're just doing a very simple series of outlines, Michael. Don't get too focused on. It's not like I'm I'm painting the final lines. We might paint some of these dark lines afterwards at the very end with black as I said earlier so this is just to so I don't lose some of these details as we're painting oops a lot of paint on there Now, actually, when I'm painting on my own, I, I don't usually, I wouldn't put these lines on it like I'm doing right now. I would, because I've, I've been painting for 25 years professionally, I, almost at this point. So I have a lot more confidence in my own ability to be able to locate some of these facial features if I lose them by looking back at the 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 photograph and you may have seen me in some of my past videos I've done just that and I've just gone ahead and I think one of the things that I've just learned as a teacher is I, I sometimes have lost people along the way and so this is I think um, a pretty good solution to that problem where now we'll have some darker lines that will come through, unlike the pencil lines, which can be more easily covered, these darker lines will kind of exist for, kind of show through layers of paint. And, you know, even at later stages, if you do start, if these lines start to disappear again, you can always paint them again. All right, so there's a little the, the little pupils in, in the eye, like the little dot in the eye, that can be a kind of a little tricky thing getting that in the exact right place. So the fact that I, I didn't get it exactly right now, it's actually kind of good because it'll, it gives me an idea of what not to do later on. All right, okay. Um, let's see. I'm just going to continue a little bit of this down here. Here's the seam on the on his shirt. And by doing those kind of lines like that, it makes it, it helps us understand that it's fabric, not his skin or some other kind of thing happening down here. So it's all about giving the viewer clues to what's going on in the painting. 
Okay. Um, and then also, I, I think I don't know if I included it in my drawing, but he's got a mole right about here. Okay, I think that's good. So, I'm going to just wipe this paint off of the brush, and we'll move on to the next step. I like to keep these brushes as clean as possible. So, if I haven't used, like, I, when I'm, it's okay for a brush to sit in the water for 10 minutes. But it's, you don't really want the brush sitting in there for an hour or three hours because what ends up happening is these brushes, if, especially if they're sitting in water like with or a, a container like this, they can start kind of bending and take a, like a weird shape. And by the time you get it out, it's sort of taken on that shape. There are containers. I've got one back here somewhere <laughs> um, that have like wires and and things in there so the brush can kind of sit kind of suspended in the water and those work as well too and might be if you're one of those persons who just likes to use 10 different brushes in a, at the same time go right ahead i tend to use maybe five brushes throughout the entire process and often less sometimes like maybe one big brush for the for wash and for backgrounds and for large areas of color and then I start going smaller and smaller and smaller as we go here which is not surprising because that's kind of we work from the, the bigger details to the smaller details wow look at all these comments in here whoa that's a lot of um, wow okay uh, let, let me go back to the beginning. I'll answer or look at a few of these, and then we'll I'll move forward here. So, uh, Paula says, thank you, Michael, for the bonus for today's painting bonus episode. My pleasure. Um, it's been a while since we've done a, a portrait like this, so it, it, I'm really excited to do that. Um, Donna says, hello, all. I have been in North Vancouver in the hospital in Abbotsford, uh, back to Champion with my two oldest granddaughters. They are flying home tomorrow. Oh my goodness, Donna. I didn't know that. Deborah says, oh my goodness, Donna, are you okay? And Donna says, yeah, I went into a fib and had to be shocked back to normal, but I'm okay now. More drugs though, blah. Oh, um, Donna says, man, Michael, you are so amazing. <laughs> I don't know. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, you're the one who sounds like um, you're doing amazing, considering some of the trouble you've you're, you've been dealing with. So uh, I'm quite honored that you're you're spending your recovery time with us today. I hope you get well as best as quickly as possible. Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, Deborah says, Donna, that is so scary. Glad that you pulled through. Hugs and take care. No, it says, sucks getting old. I was married to a white South African. Apparently, the whites didn't like Mandela much. Not surprising. I went to Robben Island and saw the cell he spent 27 years in. Um, wow, that must have been an adventure. Wow. Robben Island and seeing the actual cell. I've never been to South Africa. It's definitely on my bucket list of places to go. Um... Uh, there has been a little bit of trouble if you've followed the news lately there's been all sorts of riots and things going on in South Africa right now uh, you know it, it's considering the you know it's just the the legacy of racism and or state sponsored apartheid or state sponsored racism really um, you know it it just it it continues to have these ripple effects that go through generations and even people that that were born decades after apartheid um, legislation was repealed in 1991 um, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden everything goes away right um, but I do think one of the one of the great things that Nelson Mandela is directly responsible for is after apartheid ended in South Africa uh, he was instrumental in founding the Truth and Reconciliation Council, um, and which is 
which inspired our own version of it here in Canada, um, which is really an opportunity for people who uh, were victimized by that regime to tell their truth and have it recorded and have people listen to it um, with without with the the purpose not being to to, to find arrest prosecute and uh, jail or execute the people that did these awful crimes uh, to their fellow citizens um, because often what is re remarkable about those truth and reconciliation councils is that it's uh, it's a way for people to move forward because one of the things that, that that causes this endless cycle of violence is people feeling no one's listening no one's heard the pain that I've gone through um, so anyway <laughs> This is a painting class, but uh, okay. So let's let's mix some skin tones now. So what we've got here is we've got our cool blue in the background. We're gonna work on that background again, probably in about forty-five minutes. Because what I want to tackle now is our first attempt at the face, all right? And and maybe a little bit of the clothing down here. So what we're gonna do next we're obviously we're going to mix a brown that we can put on the face but we want to start looking for light and dark shapes we want to look for the bigger shapes that we can apply general big areas of color and then slowly refine until we get to the smallest shapes and that would be at the very end of the painting okay so let's what we want to also do is we're going to mix a warm brown and what we're looking for is what we call our local color and the local color is the color that is is um a, a color that is before it is has been uh altered with some kind of value such as a highlight or a shadow so in this case in this image you know our, our highlights are on the cheeks here and on his forehead right so those are bright areas so we don't really want to mix or paint that color because we're gonna we want to paint that highlight separately towards the end neither do we want to mix like a darkest color we don't want to mix like one of these dark colors on his ears or in under here because those are the shadows which we'll paint again later what we want is something that is in between the two so sort of like one of these kind of orangey reddish browns that might be on his skin right around here right okay so which you know that it might make this painting look a little bit odd that first little bit because um it's it's the it's a flat color so we and we're going to make oh, it's going to be a warm brown so let's take a bunch of our warm yellow get that on our brush now we're going to take some actually i'm going to take this warm red here I might as well take a bit of this blue that I used earlier we'll put that there and take a bit more warm blue from down here and you notice how like when I'm mixing I often put my colors right to the side I don't just like start mixing here I put them to the side so that I can mix together and if I see okay I want a little bit more red I just scoop a little bit more red and bring it into the center and actually that's not bad for a starting color it's a little bit more on the orangey side. So let's just take a bit of blue. And we bring that blue in. And then we're going to get... That's that's kind of the color that we want. All right, even then, maybe a little... Let's take a bit more blue. You can see I'm not using much blue at all. That's I think that's probably where we want to go. Now, I am we're going to need more of it, so I'm just going to mix it again. And it's helpful to mix, even if you're going to mix a lot, is to start out with a smaller batch and just test yourself. Can I mix this first on my own with a small amount of paint and then try to do it again with more paint? And it's probably a little bit easier to do this now than 10 minutes from now when you've got everything painted except the chin. And you're like, oh, okay, i got to mix more. I'm, a little, we're going to use a lot of this paint throughout the episode, so might as well take the time to mix a bigger batch right now. So let's, we're going to have to add a little bit more color. Let's put a bit more red. I use the other side of my brush to pick up a bit of blue. Put those there. 
and mix this together again. So this is this right now is a pretty good highlight color, right? So we could use this later on, maybe as a glaze um, on the face uh, for some of the highlights. But let's we want it to be a little bit darker. Again, not as dark as the shadow, but uh, I think that's pretty good. Hmm, maybe a little. I think we want a bit more. Uh, warm red in here and also don't worry about making it perfect if you're sitting there like ah oh, I can't get the exact color Michael's got on screen there like, right don't worry don't beat yourself up about it you do the best you can um, and then because we can always modify any of these colors later with subsequent glazes etc I think that's a pretty good Right, and basically what we've mixed here is a, is your your general skin tone. If you want to, to make it look a little bit more like a Caucasian skin tone, then you just add a little bit of white in that. If we, um, right, so uh, let's uh, yeah, let's let's just start painting with this. So uh, really, I could cover the whole face with this color, but I want to think about finding some shapes in here. So I'm going to paint right up here in the forehead. And then let's let's just kind of think about if we were to just use this color. Let's say we're not going to modify. Where else would this color go? Maybe a bit here. Maybe a bit between these eyes. All right, we're going to get a little bit darker here. Maybe a bit down the middle of the nose. Maybe a little bit here. Maybe a bit here. All right, maybe a bit under here, on tops of his cheeks, here. Maybe a little bit underneath his nose here. And different people would interpret this differently. I'm sure there's other, there's probably some people watching right now like, oh, I wouldn't have put that there. Oh, oh my goodness, what a sloppy painter. Everyone is going to see these colors differently. All right now, these are this is going to get darker, but I'm just going to paint a little bit in this area anyway right now. Let's just paint these ears. Those will get much darker shortly. Okay. And I'm just going to go right into this, his neck here, and paint that whole color in. Oops, a bit of blue on my brush, and that's okay. I think that was just, you know, it's from these lines which weren't fully dried, so. But I'll just kind of brush it in and incorporate it a bit, right? Okay. So that I think I'm I'm happy with the way that's turned out. So now let's let's look um, for some highlights here. So what I'm going to do with the highlights, I'm just going to add a bit of white to this color. Let's just mix it a bit separately here. Maybe that was a bit too much white. So let's just take a bit more color. And bring that back here. Okay, and then let's just kind of take this lighter brown and start looking for places where it can also go. Okay, 
it's yeah, uh let's get underneath here. Oh, I should have painted his, his lips already, but that's okay. Let's paint. I should. The, your bottom lip tends to, to get most of the light. All right, so I'm just going to go uh, take a small brush and let's just take this previous color. here I think I'm gonna take this my my slightly dark my original color and just paint in a bit on this temple I was thinking about maybe making that darker but I think that's okay like that you know pretty simple right and I I could have gone maybe a little bit more uh, stronger concentrations of those colors to make it even more extreme and there are some painters, you know, th this is again intended to be a beginner or intermediate painting class. So there are some people, James Gurney, who we did a painting of um, for our uh, master study class a few weeks ago, he would talk about adding a, maybe some warm and cool colors into the shadows, even at this point. But that's, I think, a lot more, more advanced than I think we need to, to get to in this moment and i strongly recommend that you follow james gurney he, he you can watch him paint um he does a lot of outdoor scenes like on location which is really cool but i think that's good for right now right and we we look at these two side by side you might say wow it's a little bit too orangey it's not brown enough but this is still an early stage in the painting right so we're not we don't expect it to be, you know, almost done. You know, we're an, uh, an hour into the class and when we didn't really start painting this until, you know, 20 minutes ago or so, right? So there's still lots of work to be done here. Um, before I move on, I want to, or to finish the background, I want to do a little bit on his clothing and his hair. Now, one of the interesting things about this photograph is his hair has got a bit of a, almost a greenish quality. So we're gonna have, this is gonna be a little bit tricky for us because we don't want to paint his hair green because then he's gonna look like he's in some punk band or something. <laughs> People will be like, whoa, what's going on there? You, you did like a Nelson Mandela play, joins the, the Ramones or something, <laughs> right? Or Green Day. Um, so what what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up we can actually even try this in fact um, I was gonna do something maybe a little bit more complicated but it might be fun to take this same color we mixed earlier and just add a little bit of white to it and just see what the results from this exercise so let's just take a bit of that paint and some white and mix this together now what we've got here is a kind of a blue gray a dark bluish gray and that's actually pretty good for um a mid-tone but i think we want something a little bit more on the white side so actually i'm just going to take that i'm going to just wipe off the excess paint on my brush not clean it but just wipe it off and we've got now a, this is a slightly different than our white um, and then let's just take a bit more of this, bring it back into the paint a bit here. Something like that. So we'll see, like, th this is a good example of, you gotta be careful when you're working from a photograph, sometimes you have to paint things a little bit different than the photograph for the painting to make sense. And so that the painting doesn't look really weird. You know, it's one thing to look at, the, because the photograph, we just accept it as being real, 
and we, we won't ask the same questions we do as a painting. If we do this painting exactly like the photograph, and we have that green hair, people will be like, why did you paint the hair green? That's weird. You're like, oh, that's what the photograph looked like. And they're like, okay, but that doesn't mean the painting doesn't still look weird, right? So just you have to be mindful when you're copying things from photographs is it, it doesn't mean you just abandoned uh, your, your creative instinct. It still requires some decision making there to, to pull it off. So let's take this white that we mixed and let's just paint it <coughs> into the hair. So really, all we're do is doing basically is painting a gray in here. And I'm kind of just trying to paint over some of the darker lines that I painted. <coughs> I almost lost my voice yesterday talking. <laughs> giving doing the feedback episode so it's like a, my voice feels a little scratchy today and I know there's lots of more comments there in the chat I just uh, I want to Keep moving forward here is at a reasonable pace. Okay. So all that already really helps, right? Putting because I think a lot of people first you know, people out in the West, including myself, probably weren't as familiar with Nelson Mandela until he got out of jail, and maybe not even until he became president, and maybe not even until he after he left politics. Um, because he actually became um, almost more visible after he left politics. Obviously, when, you know, if you were of a certain age, like I was, um, you know, I was in my... I would have been about 20, 19 years old when he was elected president of uh, South Africa in their first free elections. Prior to that, black people could not vote in South Africa. This is 1994 was the first time that the free elect. Like, it's just... So when you hear people talking about, like, racism doesn't exist anymore and it's over, that was a, that's a thing of the past. It's like... I'm, you know, I, I'm not a young guy anymore, but I'm not an old man, and I remember, like, that was ha that was only 20 years ago, right? It's, it's like, um, so, okay, so let's, <laughs> you can tell I get worked up about some of these things. Okay, so, uh, let's also now do his shirt, and what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make uh, a similar color, although this one, I think the white down here, let's go for something different than his hair, so we're not just using the same color again, although that could be kind of nice from like a, you know, a balancing perspective potentially, but it might look make him look like way too coordinated. <laughs> so instead, let's, I think let's want to mix like a greenish, um... What color would that be? It's sort of like a... Um, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know the name for it. So the only thing I know how to do is to mix it. So I'm going to take a bit more... Uh, actually, I'm going to put a bit of this... We're going to mix it down here by the blue. Probably didn't need that much yellow, but... Uh, I'm going to take... We want this to be in the foreground because it's on the... It's His shirt is close to us, right? So we're gonna take some warm yellow. We're gonna make a warm green here, and some uh, warm blue. So warm yellow and warm green. Let's just mix that together. And I'm just gonna 
I take my brush and then I, I squeeze out any extra paint because I'm going to wipe it off on this old sock here. And I'd rather have paint that I could still use on my palette here than sitting on this old sock, right? So I'm going to take a good helping of white and kind of get it all on my brush. And then I can just sort of just take a little bit of this color. Right, we can just sort of slowly add. I think I want it to be slightly more on the yellowish green side. And I think that's pretty close. Might might be a little bit um I just lighten it up a little bit. Like it's got this almost like a slightly mint it reminds me of like a like a mint that you might eat. Like a mint flavored mint. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, let's take, wipe off any little bit excess here, dive in with my brush. Mm, I might need more of this. We'll see how long, how far I can extend it. And let's see, I'm just going to paint right over top of these dark lines that I put there originally. I'm even going to go over top of these lines. You don't maybe don't have to go all the way up to the skin color if you want. Um, And we'll see how this works. Um, maybe I need to do another coat of this color later on. I think I'll be fine, but you never know. Uh, sometimes we don't know until we're a little bit further out into the painting. And depending on the way we make this painting, you might decide like, oh, you know what? I think I need something a little bit different than this color. I want something brighter or darker. It could be you know, you could make it purple or pink or whatever, right? And there's a little bit of this yellow that's coming through the painting, and I suspect as it dries, it will go even more yellow. I don't mind that personally, but I could see some people uh, wanting to really cover that up completely. Okay, so this, if, if you were thinking you wanted to take a break, this would be a great place to end for today. Right, you've got your background painted in, you've got your underpainting on the face painted in. Right, this would be if you're painting with oil paint, this might be a place where you would uh, you could stop for the day and let it dry for a couple of days and then come back in. Um, often, oil painters will paint in acrylic and then finish the painting in oil paint, in which case. This might be a place where you would you would you would stop and then break out your uh, oil paints if you wanted, because a lot of oil painters want to get this things kind of to this point and not have to sit around for a couple of days waiting for the underpainting to dry. They want to be able to do this and just like we're about to do, start painting on top of it. Right, so that's actually quite common for oil painters to use acrylic and then uh, for the kind of your base layer. And for painting portraits, it can be quite desirable because now you could then start, you've got your base layer and you can, because oil paint takes longer to dry, you can do lots of more subtle blending on the face, which is a little bit trickier to do with acrylic paint. 
Okay, so I think we'll just let this dry for just a couple seconds. While it's drying, I just want to go back to the chat here and take a look. Um, uh, <laughs> Deborah's talking. Uh, you said it, Donna. Where did all the time go? It's not fair. When I was, when I got older, I realized that old people sure got smarter. Now that I'm old. <laughs> I like to think the same thing too, right? Now that I'm getting older, that I'm just really getting very, very wise, right? <laughs> um, uh, I don't know if everyone that I know would agree with that, but I, that's what I, I like to tell myself in 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 my wise old age. I agree. <laughs> Heidi says, "Hi, Michael. Hi, everyone. Donna, sorry for your experience in Vancouver. You came in time for the record heat wave, and I was thinking about you." Take care. I hope you get better soon. And Donna says, being Canadian, I had a hard time with the prejudice in Africa. I talked to everyone the same, black or white. They were not impressed. Yeah, you could, again, like the lingering effects of uh, institutionalized racism uh, are, are hard for, I think, everyone to get over. It was hard for the black South Africans to move on and forgive as much as Nelson Mandela was advocating for that. And it was also very difficult for the, the white South Africans in power. Not all of them were wealthy, but definitely the, the, the people in power were all white and were all wealthy, right? Because there is a large population of uh, white South Afrikaners, right? People descended from, um, uh, from kind of Germanic roots who settled in South Africa when it was a colony. And then there's a large population of um, English, like people from Britain, who settled in uh, South Africa. Um, and a lot of them were farmers, and, and many of them were poor as well, um, who paid quite the price for the rich South Africans who ran the country when the country sort of was falling into chaos. Anyway, um, Deborah says, you can say that again about the white... Uh, the white South Africans hating Mandela. Two doctor friends of mine came to Canada because of the death threats for teaching blacks. Donna says exactly. My doctor is a black African. Uh, she is amazing. Deborah says my friends got out of South Africa to work in the medical field in Yellowknife. They went from heat to cold and loved it. Uh, where is where did I, oops, more stuff running in here. Um, they worked. Uh, they worked in our Inuit, and they worked with our Inuit, and they saw similar races, but not so violent yet, right? Uh, and Donna says, "Yes, yeah, so so true. It's hard for me to understand." And Paul says, "People should all take painting classes, so they will appreciate colors. People's colors are being created by God." That's that's an interesting way to think about it. Um, I th you do sort of, as you're mixing colors and you're painting people's portraits, you realize how close all of our colors are. It's just a little bit of one extra bit of pigment or a little bit more to paint faces, right? It almost, it starts, to, you're just like, it's so ridiculous that people get, will kill each other based on color. Like, <laughs> it's just, I mean, I, 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 I you know, it's maybe insensitive for me to laugh, but it's also just, it's so, like, it's so ridiculous. Like, if you were a space alien, you, like, you come down and be like, okay, well, you gotta tell me this again. You guys are killing each other because of your skin color? Like, of all the things to be, to, anyway, okay. It just seems like such, like, a, a, like, uh, uh, primitive human brain function to, to make such simplistic judgments anyway okay so i think our uh, our painting is ready for us to progress to the next stage right we got our, our foundational painting ready to go also just by the way you, you might say like what's the real difference between like you could have just painted the, the face this once that are kind of orangey brown to start out with the difference is is if i was to start and we then did our highlights with a little bit of white one of the things if we glazed over top of these even the hair as well with the same colors where it's white would would cause a f instantly 
uh, a very different reaction to the to the color that we, we put over top of it which we'll see because we're going to do some of that shortly but it is i just want to kind of point out now that even though these two areas like the, this paint here with just a little bit more white there will have profound effects later on when we're glazing um or even if if you don't glaze you'll see that because the white has such an intense tinting power that it will affect any subsequent paint over top of it um okay so let's go back to the background let's let's finish the background so that once once we start painting we'll kind of overlap a little bit of that uh and then that'll really push the background backwards so we have this kind of curtain like quality um i think and we still have a bit of this dark color which we had mixed previously so we're going to use that what i'm thinking about doing is taking a little doing the same thing but keeping some of this blue so and even a little bit of that white so i'm going to mix this color together It's not much of it left. So maybe we'll have to mix it this darker color again shortly. But I'm just taking that. In fact, let's get a bit more cool yellow. Or cool blue, sorry. Um, It is, now that I'm looking at it, it's got a bit of a uh, greenish quality. So I'm taking a bit of that cool green and just mixing it into this color. And then let's draw like some folds in the curtain. And we'll just make basically vertical lines. You know, if you want, actually, you could just paint this whole background that color. It's kind of, it, I don't know how it looks on camera, but I actually kind of like it. Um, it's like a really dark teal. And let's do the same thing on this side. In fact, I think I'm going to, I might just do that. I kind of like that color. We'll see, we'll see. I'll, I'll paint it in and then make a decision after that but that's this is also the process of painting sometimes you like you like intend to do one thing and then you mix a color and you like that color and you're like hey, I don't know I might just keep the whole thing I, this doesn't change what I could do. It's not going to limit the possibilities to do a curtain here. Because um, basically I can just paint dark stripes over top of this. But uh, there's lots of ways to do the exact same thing. I don't know, I kind of, well, hmm, I might have to, I might leave this and then decide if I want to do the curtain afterwards, although it would be just nice just to get the background out of the way so I don't have to think about it going forward. Okay. 
Okay. So let's. Uh, I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna use the hair dryer just to speed up that process, and I think I will put a darker color in the, over top of it. So this is probably going to be quite subtle of an effect. In fact, I could even, I, there's two ways I could go about this. I could make it darker, or I could decide to make this the darkest part and make the folds over top a highlight. So, you know, hmm. And it is tricky at this point to make that decision because I'm not, I don't know precisely how things are going to turn out. So, I think I'm going to make it a little bit darker. So let's mix this dark color again. So I'm just going to take uh, my blues, mix them together, some warm red. More, more warm blue in here. So basically, again, we're, we're, we're mixing the exact same color we began with that we did our outlines on the face with. It's kind of nice. Um, take a bit of cold yellow, and that helps just kill the intensity of the paint and make it very grayish. So I suspect this will be very subtle. Uh, so, which is not, that's not a problem. Sometimes that's kind of what's really nice. Often, and I'm kind of guilty of this, I like to amp up the contrasts and everything. Um, I'm not one <laughs> for uh, a lot of subtlety and um, uh, so it can be nice to have a little bit of uh, just a little a little bit more subtlety so I'm going to mix in my glazing fluid which is going to keep the paint a little bit wet a little bit longer just long enough for us to do a little bit of blending you could use some slow dry medium here to, to help that would be they'd be kind of interchangeable really um so we'll see i don't know if this is going to show up too well because they are it's such a dark color but okay actually let's do this quickly i'm going to paint these stripes I'm painting all the stripes in. Got a big wet paintbrush. And then I'm just going to try to wipe off as much excess paint as possible so that I get a kind of a dry brush. And then I'm just going to kind of smooth out these edges. Oh, I just noticed that line should continue down there. But That is very subtle. 
maybe too subtle. Let's go down here and finish that. I don't know. In some way, it kind of almost looks like jail bars. I am guilty sometimes of, of overworking my backgrounds or spending too much time on the background. So I think I'll just leave that for now. It's, it's, I can see it here, but I think especially once it dries, it's going to get even more subtle. I just, I, you know what, I'm going to do a little, I'm, I'm going to brighten it up. So I've got, now I'm going to go my highlights here. I know this is a bit of a pain, but, uh, hey, this is, this is my painting, right? And I get to do whatever I want to my painting. So I'm going to take uh, this cool blue, adding a little bit of cool yellow into there. So let's get a bit of a greenish kind of hue, slightly. And that will be much different. And this time I'm going to use my slow dry medium, or what is a different brands might call a retarder, paint retarder. And that just, it does the same thing as the glaze, it just keeps the paint wet much longer. So I'm going to take this paint, mixing in that medium, the slow dry medium. Um, as much as possible. Okay. That's much more visible. So I'm doing this in between where my darker lines were just moments ago. This is why you shouldn't be afraid to go like into the shirt there at the bottom. You can always touch that up later or into the hair here momentarily. I got a lot of paint on my brush, so I'm just putting it onto the canvas. And then I'll spread it out. Like I was even thinking like you could paint like the South African flag maybe on there. Okay, so I'm just going to take all this excess. Actually, I'm going to wipe the excess off here. Maybe I'll use that for the lines on a shirt or something. Modify it a little bit. And then just kind of quickly try to integrate these lines. Blend them out a little bit. Ah, I forgot to do down here. This is the second time I did that. Where's that line comes? And you can also use like a blending brush just to 
help a little bit with that softening up any of your lines. Okay, so we kind of go back. To, I haven't actually looked at the image in a while. Um, well, not bad. There's definitely some weird reflections on it, but as the paint dries, all of that will go away. So just have to have a little bit of patience. Okay. So that, I actually, I love super subtle things like that. I think that's the kind of thing that rewards viewers of your work later on. Uh, you know, if the, if the painting is on the wall for for months, you know, people might, they look at it like, oh, that's cool, painting Nelson Mandela. When did you do that? Blah, 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 blah. And then months down the line, they, they go like, is there stripes back in the background? You know what? I, I that painting's been up there for months. I just now finally realized that when the light hit it in a certain way, that is really cool, right? I think all of the great paintings I can think of have that kind of element of of that little bit of a bonus people get the more they look at something. Which think about your favorite book or your favorite television show. Have you ever watched something uh, and then you watch it again the next night or 10 years later with a friend and then you're watching it and you have a totally different experience than your friend and you see things that they didn't see and you're like, oh, I see all the clues that, you know, the murder mystery that I just that went right by me. I didn't even think about, you know, that they zoomed in on the on that guy's shoe for some reason. I just thought, wow. I'm, guy's got nice shoes and it turns out oh, those were the shoes the murderer wore oh no it's the butler <laughs> whatever right okay i gotta keep on moving so what should we do next huh so we could there's really no uh, particular order any of the next steps have to go in except maybe the final things being black as if you want to use black for some of these little parts uh, little folds as we've talked about previously um, my instinct tells me I want to do the hair next and then the face we'll do a pass on the face some of the the the, the shirt and then probably f go back and finish the face. I think so those are just, but I'm sure I could be convinced to do exactly the opposite. So let's take a look at the hair. And you know, <laughs> so the hair right now has a little bit of, it reminds me of one of those like English, British judges, <laughs> you know, like little curls there and the, the black smock that they wear, right? Because it just looks, it looks like a wig, right? So we need to make this look more believable, like actual hair, right? And he's got like this fine curls in here. And so that poses a, like a good question. We've got like a lot of detail, like most people's hair has a lot of detail. I mean, you're literally talking hundreds of thousands of individual hairs. So that always pauses a, a presents the painter with a, a, a big challenge you know it's it's like okay you got one eye okay you could spend a lot of time on that i got another eye i could paint that one but do i paint 
10,000 hairs. There are some artists that do that. But, you know, I want to finish this painting in about an hour and a half. So I don't have all the time in the day to do that. So I have to make some creative choices in order to simplify this incredibly detailed um, area. So let's maybe first start mixing a color, right? We used this, uh, this dark blue previously, and then we added some white to it. So let's continue down that road. I think it kind of it should work pretty well for us again. The only thing that I might do here is um, I might just add a little bit of brown into this color. Right, it goes a little bit of uh, kind of greenish a little bit. Let's see. We'll see how that works. As I mix it, I'm like, hmm, actually, that didn't quite give me the effect I was planning on. But I, I'm going to use it anyway. Uh, I was going to go for a little bit of a, a, a light brown. But I think I'm going to use this as an under paint here. So I'm going to take this. Actually, I'm going to add. Actually, I'm not even going to go to the glazing fluid yet. Let's just think about the darker areas of his hair. You can see this is pretty subtle. I'm actually just going to get it a little bit darker. Painting a little bit of it to kind of go behind his ear just a little bit. And again, I know that's not in the photograph, but I have to take a few little liberties here. Now, the way that I am going to approach this, his hair, is a bit of like almost like a pointillist kind of method, a little bit like the Impressionist, right? Because I'm not going to spend hours trying to get all these little beautiful curls in the hair. So I'm making my own creative decision to solve this this particular problem here. Creative problem that artists are often faced with. And it's entirely possible that as I get closer, you know, I might be like, oh, actually I didn't do a good job on that. I'm not happy with the way that looks. And then I'd have to come up with a different strategy. So how about let's just zoom in here. We've been kind of zoomed out for a while. All right, and I'm just moving along here. Oops, let's bring that down. There we go. And you always remember that the vast majority of people will never look at your painting as as and spend as much time looking at it as you did. Um, and not only that, people won't look at it as closely, like literally will not ever get as close up to the painting as you do and maybe they do but maybe for 10 seconds 30 seconds let's say five minutes but you probably are going to spend three hours painting this painting and no one's going to spend three hours with their nose up to it in the same like you did So, as much as it's really nice to have a great, like a painting that looks gorgeous when you get your nose right up to, to it, especially when we're just learning how to paint, you might want to just, as long as it looks okay from five feet away or a couple meters or something, that's all that's required, right? 
Okay. You know, I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna add just a few little bits of gray into the eyebrows. I probably really would want to save this until a bit later, but because there's not, he, do, he has very thin eyebrows. Right, so we'll be painting over some of this, but this might kind of be just a good reminder of where those things are. And not only that, I'm going to take this color, but use a much smaller brush. And I'm just going to go into the whites of his eyes with this. Actually, I'm going to brighten it up. I've got a little bit more white that's too dark. Um, but this is not just pure white that I'm painting here. We barely see the whites of his eyes at all, right? He's got these such beautiful kind of like smiling folds with his when he smiles that his eyes almost you know close up entirely, which is like a really sweet um, kind of quality that is kind of not exclusive to him, but again, I just it seems to me that really speaks to his to his spirit and humanity and kind of thing. Okay. So. Um, yeah, I'm going to clean those brushes. take a second here let's look at the chat once more someone lots of comments you guys are very active today um donna says i'm so tanned i've really changed my color <laughs> we were talking about skin color lately but i i'd be nice i i need to get out and have a little bit more sun um i'm, I'm usually i've got uh <laughs> i'm spending most of my time with our daughter these days that my uh i'm kind of in like going around with a small child is like being on some kind of military mission you <laughs> like packed everything in so i'm very pale under all these clothes um deborah says i will paint this later my lovely dog gracie became very ill with addison's disease and i have to go give her medicine and get her to eat i cannot leave her for long happy sunday everyone oh my goodness a lot of people having some dealing with some serious things today i hope uh, you're uh your dog feels better or I mean I have I don't really know anything about Addison's disease so that's tragic I'm sorry to hear that Deborah Heidi says yeah sorry Deborah but your dog reminds me of my cat Donna says a speedy recovery for the fur baby I know he will have it forever once you get him stable he will be more like his old self uh, Deborah says thanks Donna I was really shocked but we we're all working together to get her through Lots of heart emojis in the chat. Very supportive group of people. That's very sweet. Um, uh, and Eleanor says, I hope you're feeling better soon, Donna. Um, I'm feeling better. I'm feeling pretty good. Thank you, says Donna. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, I think, you know, I do want to work more on the hair. I think what I'm going to do is just do one additional color on here. I'm going to darken it a little bit, and then I'm going to leave it, and any other things I'm going to do, I'll do as glazes later on. So I'm just going to take a small brush. I'm going to take some of this dark color that we had here before, mix it a little bit into this uh, kind of bluish gray that I had here, just so it's not quite as strong as that. That would be too intense, but that's pretty good. And then let's zoom back in here. And okay. let's just sort of think a little bit about this kind of maybe doing some smaller little dots on here. Right. 
another thing, and I could have done this, is kind of blending the white of his hair out and then softening those edges would have actually created a pretty cool effect of like that short, shallow depth of field that we see in, in photography like that. Um, but maybe that's for another day here. So, you know, I don't know how I feel about how this looks just yet. I think actually I'll probably go into the white and do a little bit of something in the white after this. Because now it looks a little bit too bland. on the brush. Okay. And then I'm just going to lighten it back up. I'm going to take some more white here and just add sure how I entirely feel about what I've done here but you know I think what I'm I, it might improve as I get more of the face done it might get worse as I get more of the face done so um, rather than just you know work and work and work and struggle and, and throw things around I think the best thing to do is to continue working on other parts of the canvas and because it might be that this looks a little bit strange because this is unfinished and once this gets closer the rest of the face gets closer to being finished then the hair will 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 make sense that's possible it's possible that this still throughout the rest of the painting looks a little bit strange and we i don't know i have no idea until later so there's no point in because i could get this and it could look really really good I could be really happy with it and then I do the face and then I end up realizing you know what painting it like this would look more appropriate with the face the way that I end up painting it you never really know until the very end which is scary and frustrating for the beginner painter I totally get it but when you've been painting for a while it actually becomes the thing that gets me most excited is not knowing how it's going to turn out. I have a per, like a, a general idea, but I don't know specifically how it's going to turn out. And that kind of adventure is, is it's, it's like going for a hike. Oh yeah. You can read in, in, you know, you can get, I have a few books from the library on hikes that you can go on with your family, right? Cause in Vancouver, we've got nice mountains all over the place. And so, of course, you could just say, oh, I just, I read the guidebook. Why do I need to go on the hike? I already, but you go on the hike and you end up seeing animals you didn't expect. You find things, you see beautiful sunsets along the way or whatever. You run into an old friend. Uh, our, I know our daughter would pick up a pine cone or some stick that she was gets really excited about. And that's not in the guidebook. That's why you, you go on those experiences, even though they're very well documented okay so let's now think about the face again and now we've got this 
this kind of light orangey color underneath and maybe there's some places where it's gonna poke out we'll still we'll see some of these things but now we're gonna just really dial it in so we've got the, the color that we had there previously now we want to maybe give it we're gonna go into some maybe more nuance here and I think we want to go a little bit darker so yeah, I'm gonna mix it with a small brush in fact oh we've got some yellow up here steal that so I've got the color it's still kind of wet uh, I think it needs to go a little bit more of a reddish brown so let's mix that in then you're like okay reddish brown but that's a very very red bright reddish brown so let's take some warm blue and mix this in here so to get a little bit of a darker reddish brown and take it away from that bright yellow okay now we're getting closer see i just keep on adding a little bit of blue darkens it down ever so slightly okay and so let's see now um Now is where I'm going to start getting maybe a little bit more careful with the, you know, I had these big shapes before. I'm do kind of a bit in the hairline. And, oh, my overhead camera just overheated. So, <laughs> I got to, oh, why did that? Hmm. ice pack okay okay we'll let this heat up a little bit um I think so I'm just I got all this wet paint on here so I'm just gonna try to do a little bit of blending then okay let's turn this back on see if that works great okay cool so I'm taking this paint and actually you know what I'm gonna put um, some glazing fluid in there as well Can make it a little more transparent, but I'll be able to blend my paint a little bit more. Okay. So then you can take this and blend it out a little bit if you want. Now I'm going to be blending, I'll have some other colors I'll put over top of this, but you don't really have to do that just yet. But And there's really different ways of painting portraits too, right? Like sometimes artists do a lot of blending, and then sometimes artists don't do any, and we have like quite hard shapes on the face. So, you know, now I'm just thinking, maybe I should do this with almost no blending. We've done a lot of portraits where we have done lots of blending like with the vermeer girl with the pearl earring so i might i might just do shapes on here today maybe i'll i'll, I'll uh, not use the slow dry medium or glazing today or I'll, tr I'll restrain myself i think I'll, I'll that's what i'll do i might use it but less than i might ordinarily do for this portrait that's yeah I think I'll do that it does it can be a little bit tough to do um, but we're here to learn right we'll try something a little bit different 
So in order to do this kind of thing where we're going to put on, we're going to do less blending than, than we have done recently, we're really going to have to look for the shapes. Okay, so I've got that painted in. I think I'm now just going to add a bit more blue into the same color and just get a, a few, some darker shapes in here while I'm right here. So I just added blue to this color, nothing else. Just took blue and add, mixed it into this existing color. Okay. So you see I'm just sort of slowly going around looking for the darkest shapes and painting in my this slightly darker brown. And really I'm just going to continue going over the painting in the same sort of way. So it, for a while, it's going to make this face look a little bit mask-like. So it's just using the same brown, just adding a little bit more paint, a little bit more blue to make it a little bit darker. I remember how we painted these eyebrows white and I just paint over top of them it kind of makes them it just looks a little bit darker There's a little bit of a too much of a contrast here, so we'll, we'll we'll blend that back in. I think shortly here. Okay. 
Uh, so we the we'll, our chin is still here. It's kind of gotten a little bit lost, and is but we'll darken this more and more as we go. Okay. So how about let's go for a bit of a peachy. Uh, color for some of his the highlights on here. So I'm taking the warm yellow, warm red, and I, think I need some. I need, I need some more white here. very peachy so let's just take a bit of that brown we were just using and just mix a bit of that color in there so it's incorporated and then let's take this this color which is a little bit different Don't worry if you got some of these shapes quote unquote wrong. Everything can be modified. Everything can be changed. Here I'm getting a little bit of paint on his earlobes. Brighten those up. Take the same color. Draw his lips. And then come in here with his eyes. Okay. <laughs> Before we did those eyes, it did look a little bit like somebody wearing blackface right so because the eyes were too white around these edges or too light and therefore it looked a little bit strange okay um I, you know we're we're i think we're doing really well i could see some people panicking when they see their painting like at this stage i'm going to take my brush and just take a little bit of color and go into the the bottom part of the hair so that we don't have such a hard line between where the hair is begins and where the the forehead is because we would expect to see a little bit of that the scalp underneath some of that hair so I'm just softening that edge a little bit that's pretty good I'm, I'm happy with with where we are right now let's clean that brush off
And then I think what is helpful to do is to look at your painting and to kind of squint your eyes a little bit. And, and also the original. And just sort of looking at them side by side and thinking about like, you know, squinting your eyes like you're pretending to sleep. And what it does is it gets rid of all the detail. So if I look at these two paintings side by side, oops, let's, come on. There we go. Um, what I see is that it's a little bit too bright down here. So we'll darken things in under here. And the eyes, it's a little bit deceptive with these eyes right now. In fact, I might now work on these eyes next. Because this is, I think, is causing me, anyway, a little bit of difficulty because they look so bright that it, it could be affecting the way I see some of the other colors on the face. So I'm going to probably outline, and, and I think that will help tremendously. And then I might work on the mouth, get the expression on the on the mouth and, as well as the eyes, and I think that will will carry me a long ways away to or long ways further to getting closer to finishing. Okay. Not to take tea break. I see May just uh, joined us. Says, I just got online. Donna, I'm sorry to hear about your health uh, episode. I'm glad you're feeling better now. Take it easy. Glad to see you're back to painting now. So... The... 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 There might be right now the the desire to want to jump right to the black to get some of these darker things, but again, I will I will encourage you to hold off on going black just yet, because I think we might want to w wait until because that black is going to be the darkest thing on the canvas. I know there's some people, some painters. I had a painting teacher who would always tell us to go at the beginning of the painting to go to your highest contrast first go to black and then white and then work your way towards the middle i've personally found that a little bit difficult i i would rather start in the middle and work my way out to the contrast i know what he was the reason why he taught that way is often most artists often including myself are afraid to go to the darkest and the lightest and we end up having our painting existing within this range of values and so his strategy was like go right to the edges first and then dial it towards the middle and then you have your contrast and you don't have to worry about them anymore i i totally appreciate that perspective and there might be some of you who who would benefit from trying that process there's definitely a lot of people who end up in this very narrow uh area and it doesn't give you enough contrast to really create a, a, a believable representational image if that's what you want to create right okay so i'm just going to go back to my dark color that i used for the background it's I still have some of this here and Let's, uh, let's, in fact, let's zoom right in. And let's zoom. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's probably close enough, right? So... We've got, we've actually got, his eyes are quite small in here, like I said before. So, we're going to have to do another fold on his eyes, right? And I'm going to paint this right in, and we'll, we'll put some highlights on there later on. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, let's just start that over again. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's the rag? 
Let's start it over. Mm, that might make him look a little bit tired, so let's bring that up. So I'm putting in these fairly dark lines. Again, I can always get rid of some of this stuff as I'm painting later on. Subsequent layers of paint. I'm going to do the same thing here with his nose as well, since we're right here. Like underneath the nose is is usually where things are the darkest, right? Because usually the light is coming from above, unless you're in a scary movie or you're, you're sitting around a campfire. So I'm going to take a little bit of uh, white and mix this into a little bit of that brighter, uh, into this darker color, sorry, and just put a few highlights right here, right now. Those can also change. I want to have some placeholders. I'm going to go back to... I'm actually going to do a lot of the main outlines here on the face while we're right here. Um, let's get this line on his cheeks. Like, he's got quite pronounced kind of laugh lines, I guess you'd say. More than maybe most people. You know what, this line, I'm going to start using a bit of, uh, I'm going to make a purple. 
I'm going to take uh, cool blue, or, or cool red and cool blue. So my magenta and my ultramarine blue. Mix these together for these lips. I see a bit of... This might have been a more appropriate color to use earlier anyway. I like that. I'm going to use this same color. I'm just going to paint over some of these lines I put in. Not maybe all of them, but I think it's going to look nice. So, just gives it a bit more nuance. I think I'm even just going to, with this kind of purple, do a few lines on here. Because part of the, if you're not going to do a lot of blending, then we're going to have to be quite creative with the choices of color and where we, we place different patches of color. And this might mean I, I make a few mistakes along the way and have to change course and paint things out. I could end up using quite radical, um, like I could be, there could be, patches of green and brown or not green uh, green and purple and orange kind of things we might expect in like a Matisse painting or something right Take a bit of white into the same color. I'm 
get his. Let's just do the whole bottom lip that color. Just kind of purple. Looks a little bit silly, but we'll, we'll darken towards the edges a bit anyway. On, let's do some of the stuff on his ears. Oops, you can't see that. Okay. Let's zoom out. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we're we still need to do quite a bit of work here. Um Okay. I think what I'm gonna do What should we do next here? I definitely we need to darken a bunch of this quite significantly um, so I think let's maybe go down towards the neck and then kind of come up a little bit and maybe we'll do some maybe we, well I was gonna do without any glazing wasn't it that's my plan um, so let's take this brown that we had let's make it darker take some dark blue or sort of warm blue Now I'm just looking for darker areas, this kind of slightly darker color. Underneath his nose here we'll go. So I've got a pretty dry brush here, which is great for blending. Okay. 
Let's go back up into his hair. And here on his eyes. I'm just going to go over top. I was painting these purples here moments ago. I paint right over some of that. And it just sort of like they fall in line a little bit into. They don't seem quite so ridiculously purple all of a sudden. about where I expected to be at this point so um, it's not certainly not finished but we're slowly building up getting closer and closer to where we do want to be and you can see like I haven't dipped my paint back my brush back into the paint in maybe two or three minutes so I, I sort of paint a little bit and then whenever possible use my dry brush to do some very rudimentary blending. Alright, so here I'm going back into the paint again. go back into these lips and just the bottom part of the lip or the the bottom of the top part of the lip let's go back under this nose Paint a bit on the eyes themselves. And you know what? I might even just take a bit of this color. Hmm, I was going to do some in the hair, but let me think about that. slightly darker version of the same color, taking more blue. In here, maybe even a tad bit of this purple we mixed. Just to give this darker color a little bit more life, even though it's dark.
kind of want to accentuate these like very rosy cheeks that are kind of very prominent that come out quite far. Ah, so actually, <laughs> I like the way it looks in front of me a little bit better than it does on on camera. But that's sometimes that's that happens to me a lot, unfortunately. But uh, you know, I'm like, oh, I love how it looks, and I look at the screen, like, oh, I don't know if it looks so great there, but. Um, See, like, this brush is very dry, and it's, it ends up having, like, a very soft kind of quality. I love that. I didn't like that line that I just put on there. I think I also got to lighten up on his forehead, so we'll be doing the same sort of thing, but going in the opposite direction and lightening things up shortly. So I'm kind of going over and over and over things, and sometimes, you know, if I, I, I darken something, let that dry and then go over it again with this slightly dry brush it just darkens that just a little bit okay so what i'm doing right now is i'm like i have a, a preview image of what you guys see right underneath the camera so i'm looking at it it's squinting my eyes and I can compare them side by side and I start looking to like what are like because basically what I'll see then is the the shapes of the highlights and the shapes of the shadows most clearly everything gets kind of fuzzy right and then I, I'm looking and I think okay where where are the glaring things you know it's like one of those two pictures they're almost identical but you know they're the chair is missing a leg here and you know somebody's missing an eye or six fingers or whatever and so you're comparing the same sort of thing i'm doing here and i'm thinking like okay is the highlights on the cheeks how are, how are they doing is that a little bit too dark or bright and can i kind of just um, slowly reduce the intensity of a particular area. Like, I might brighten that up a little bit. Like this brush barely has any paint on it, but it's great for doing this kind of blending stuff.
He's got these like very pronounced cheeks when he smiles, right? And by by accentuating the tops here, it makes it we understand that they're being pushed up because the, the lips are going outward. Um, again, I'm, st I'm just squinting my eyes as I'm looking at this painting. See, I'm just I'm getting more and more specific as I go here. Okay. I think that's, you know, for right now, I'm going to leave that right there. I'm going to work on the shirt and then the hair again. And then we'll come back and work on the face, because at some at some point, you know, you might there might be just you just need to take a break from one area of the painting. Like I, I'm pretty close. I haven't quite completely got the likeness there that I want, but um, but we're we're in the ballpark for sure. Clean off those brushes. Okay, so his shirt. We um, let's take a look here. Now there is a little bit of paint that I got from the background when I was tidying up the background on there. Do I want to make any adjustments there? I'm trying to remember. Even I think that color was a green, right? We took our our. Uh, warm blue warm yellow and then we just added some uh, white to it right so I'm just gonna wipe off that paint let's get some white in here pretty close Um, and then let's just think about maybe I can add a little bit of incorporate this slightly different color and turn it into like a, the color of a fold or something, right? little bit of nuance which is the key for clothing now I'm not painting it everywhere right now it's um, I'm just gonna take the same thing let's just get a little bit more color on here See all that, and then let's get underneath here. Let's 
go just a slightly smaller brush. This collar's a little bit funky. Okay, let's get... Let's go around behind his neck there. It's got to get darker. So have to be careful not to make his neck too thin or it's going to look really weird. purple, just darker purple. It kind of happened by accident as I was mixing the colors, but I don't mind it. Um, and then it's going to go much darker even take my dark color that I had here. This might be something where I, when I use black later on, I'll, I'll do some work in here with that. I'm a little concerned that that's making his neck look thinner and thinner and thinner as I go. So, just another thing to be a little bit mindful of. So you can see what I'm just doing here is I'm, I've got two brushes in my hand. I'm taking one brush that's got a darker color and one's just, I'm sort of had a lighter color and using it as kind of a blending brush just to, to integrate that darker color and even paint over it a little bit if need be. So I think next what I'm going to do is paint 
The uh, just the the lines on his shirt here will. And then you, it, it depends on how much. Well, I guess I got to do a bit of his hair too, right? So I guess we'll we'll do that after I got the lines on the shirt done. Um, oops, a little bit off crooked here. <laughs> uh, Donna says, looking at it with squinty eyes just gives me wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, she also says, I've had a bit of a bad luck and so ready to come back to painting and drawing. Good. I've had a bit of bad luck. So, um, yeah, I think sometimes just making a little bit of art takes us out of our heads and any kind of troubles that we might have elsewhere in life or with our health. Making a little bit of painting just all of a like I often have found like there's been times where I've started these episodes these shows where I've got a raging headache or something and it's like and then 20 minutes in as we go like oh yeah I remember I had a headache a little while ago yeah, I guess that's gone um yeah let's do those lines I think I am going to do a little fading a little bit of a uh, fade out with his hair into the background. Get rid of this quite sharp edge as I'm just looking at it now. Okay. Let's do these lines on the shirt. What color should we do? I guess I still have this green, this aqua color that I had mixed. And you can see this is the slow dry medium that was in there. We, we painted those stripes like an hour and a half ago or something on there, and they're still there. So, uh, let's see his shirt here. All right, I want these lines to really curve and show the form of the fabric, maybe even more exaggerated than in the photograph. come back I'll do the other lines shortly that, that intersect with it <laughs> my lines might be almost too uh, a little bit too pronounced, these, the, the wobbles in them. But again, that's just my personal style of drawing and painting and what I'm attracted to. So, feel free to, feel free to ignore anything <laughs> I'm saying. You don't have to listen to anything I say, right? <clears throat> it's a little bit weird that these two lines are so close together at the front. Ideally, these lines should be getting closer together the further the way they go backwards, but it is what it is. So, uh, let's do...
coming under here. I'm not too pleased with this line. I'm, I <coughs> should not be close to connecting with that one. That was an, that's a little bit of an oversight because you don't want to have that confusion as to people like, oh, what's is? I thought that was the collar. Oh no, no, but it's <coughs> connecting to a different line, right? So. Excuse me. I've got a tickle in my throat. It's driving me crazy. So where would this line? This line would go up and then kind of up and over, I think. It's kind of fun trying to do these lines and I'm not even I haven't looked at the original <laughs> in a while I mean, am I yeah I'm totally off the off the map here but uh, as kind of usual I like to just do my own thing Let's get the lines. I'm not sure why I didn't do this side first. Would have been easier with my being right handed, but <clears throat> I often <laughs> am perplexed by the own my own decision making. So I'll try to avoid what I did here on this side. So... Now I'm not going to do all the patterns that's inside there and all the little dots. You're certainly welcome to do that.
Okay, getting closer to finishing this shirt. It 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 pays off doing that kind of this stuff, right? It, I think it does give a lot of uh, nuance to the rest of the painting. Okay. Uh, Maria says, I really enjoy the brush marks. They're very visible. Yeah, definitely a different approach. I, I wanted to do something a little bit different than we've done before. In a number of the other portraits we've done, like, again, the girl with the pearl earring, um, it's, I've, we really did a lot of, like, blending using, I think it was slow dry medium or glazing fluid. And you get the really nice, subtle transitions of value as we go around a form, right? And, and uh, traditionally, that's how it was done, and it's it's very appealing to see that kind of thing. But I think there's also something to be said when we be a little bit more expressive with our brush, and we allow for the original brush stroke. Like, I mean, every time I look on the screen, one thing I see is this area right here. That this is a brush stroke from hours ago that is still there I could easily cover it and maybe as I continue here it will disappear but I'm not making any effort to keep it nor hide it at this point so I'm going to do the hair I'll add a little bit more to the hair and um, how do we do that that was I think cold I think it was the same color, or it doesn't really matter. But uh, let's take some white. I'm just going to use glazing fluid. I'm not using a lot of paint, but there's barely any paint on there. Just put a little bit of white glazing fluid and just mix that up. Just get a bit of that blue in here. Okay, because what I'm going to do now is take my brush and go around these outside edges and just soften I need actually a bit more white on here a little bit too transparent. So what I'm trying to do is just get a little bit of a softer edge around the hair. You can see I'm kind of going slowly. I'm not doing the whole head all at once. All right, if keeping this brush as dry as possible, because that's what helps the blending. Once it starts getting wet, then you start transferring paint all over the place and it just gets messy and
All right, then we'll just kind of go back. Start it again. That's better. Um, I'm also just expanding the hair out a little bit. In a few places, like, it felt like it was a little bit too tight in towards his head there, so. It's also toned down a little bit, uh, or tinted down some of the intensity of some of these dots and lines and stuff I put in there earlier, so, which I kind of like, it's, it was, maybe it was a little bit too pronounced, so I'm just pushing that back. Okay, there's a little bit of kind of blending things here, just, oops, the paint was just too, it's, it's kind of half wet, half dry, so I need to blow dry that and fix that, and then I think... I think I could be happy with the hair being like that. Maybe I'm gonna t actually let's blow dry that one more time since it's all wet. Let's just just want to get. This taken care of there. I'm also just going to come in a little bit closer on these temples. Remember how we, I blended a little bit uh, of the hair or the forehead color back out into the hair so that we could have a bit of that there? I do want to do that again, but kind of the opposite direction. Kind of now taking the hair and having it come up a little bit closer onto the head, as well as kind of by the ears here.
<laughs> it does look kind of like a glowing, angelic head of hair, which is maybe fitting, but it's also, we've lost a bit of the detail in there. So I think what might be appropriate is just to take a bit of this darker color, if we have any left, and just mix a bit of it in here. Let's put a bit of uh, glazing fluid. Oops. Don't have to do too much of it, but let's just give a bit of nuance back in here. And actually, I'm just going to blow dry that again. I, just as I was blow drying, I saw your comment, Donna, about the <laughs> a blow dryer being too loud. So thank you for that. I appreciate that comment. So I'll try to do that. The only thing I have to just remember is to unmute it afterwards because I had a habit of accidentally muting the microphone when I was blow drying and then forgetting to turn it back on. And then 20 minutes goes by and I look at the ch and there's like all these... Unmute the microphone, are you nuts? So, but, uh, thank you for that. That's good, good advice. I appreciate that. Okay, maybe I'm going to go even one little bit step darker. Oops, that's maybe a little bit too... Oh, no, let's see. That's much darker. Maybe a little bit too dark. I'm just gonna add a little more white back into here. Okay, I don't think I'm going to... I could spend more time on the hair, but that's... Let's start wrapping things up here. Um, you know, before I totally do that, I'm going to take this darker color and just put a bit of... slightly darker kind of grayish blue right by the hairline.
Okay. That's good enough for government work, as my grandfather used to say. So, what needs to be done here? I think it might be helpful to have just a little bit more warmth in the cheeks. So I'm just going to clean my brushes. We'll go to... It, it's just debatable how, how much you want to make the the kind of the cheeks pop. Okay. So let's, we're going to basically mix the same kind of peachy color. We'll take some warm yellow, warm red, a little bit more yellow. Where's my white? Maybe just a little bit of a blue so it's not so wild off the charts. A bit of that red on there. Okay. Let's go to a smaller brush. Gotta be a little bit careful, otherwise I'm gonna make him look like a, an old lady wearing too much makeup or something, right? Okay, 
We're getting so close. This is good. You know, I could work on this for hours and hours to try to really get it perfect. But my, I want to sort of start winding down here in the next, like, 20 minutes. I'd like to be done, you know, ver fairly soon. So, uh, you know, you don't need to... It doesn't have to be perfect, right? Just always remember that every painting is a learning experience. And you're getting better and better as you go. I'm just going to take an extra little bit of white, get some glazing fluid. This is where I like doing little bits of very subtle kind of little pops of light can help correct any kind of maybe problems you had earlier on.
I mean, I can keep on doing this forever because it's I actually really enjoy doing this kind of stuff, but uh, I'm going to have to... See, now this is where I should have let things dry, which I'm, so I'm not going to blow dry this. I'm going to mute my microphone again um, and then let that... Because now I've, I'm trying to... I'm kind of counteracting... There, this wet paint, I just kind of scrubbed it right off so that I have to fix this cheek. Okay. Okay, let's take a look at this. Again, I'm, gonna, I'm squinting with my eyes. What is the brightest possible places? Because these bright places help push the part, those parts of the face closer to us, right? Because they seem closer. They're, they're, they're elevated. That's where their light is popping and hitting it.
just brighten up those eyebrows a little bit. Okay, now these lips are kind of driving me crazy. I want this to be a bit more of a reddish, uh, not purple kind of quality. So I'm just taking some more warm red. do a little tiny outlining with some in fact let's I'll zoom in here especially because now we're getting close to wrapping this painting up whoa Okay, now look at the reflection that is on his face. Even in some of the dark areas, it's got that it's got a cool blue quality to it. So let's get a bit of that in this painting now. And then we're going to outline things. So we're we're getting close to the end. Now we're really really going into the details here. It's just a little bit of cold blue. Where's my white? There's my white. I'm going to glaze with this. So I'm just going to wipe the paint off my brush and then come back. So I didn't even really notice that color until at this point of the painting. Um, which is not surprising. You know, often you're working on the painting and you're looking at all the high, high level details. And then towards the end is when you start seeing some of these more subtle reflections and things. So that's light coming back up off of his or from underneath maybe from his lips reflecting up and under there
Oops. Okay. Just while I was in the highlights there with these, uh, I like this kind of fold right here. I painted it blue, but I think I'm going to paint that just a little bit more pink again. Okay, I think I, I'm, I obviously geek out on this and I love doing this kind of stuff, but I'm going to start putting in some of my dark lines. That bottom lip is maybe a, is, is definitely too big. It's too wide, too thick right here. Let's see if I can just take care of that. Let's see. Hmm. I don't know. Might be stuck with it. It's definitely almost like twice the size as it should be. I wonder maybe when I'm painting the line dividing those lips together with some black. I'm about to do I think I might be able to fix that okay so here is uh, um, possibly the final thing we do here is add a little bit of black onto the palette we barely need any I will have that black tube of paint I'll, I'll probably go through another four or five tubes of each of these colors before I'm done that black. At least. At least. In fact, I should have bought a much smaller tube of black. But I bought those so that when I teach in person, we can use these paints. And people use a lot of black in class, even though I tell them not to. But, uh... Uh, let's see. I'm gonna mix this. I'm gonna mix it with just a darker... Let's say one of these other colors that's still here. Let's use just a big mix of color here. So this is by far darker than anything else on the canvas. Um, but still not totally black. Because I want I'm gonna reserve that. For kind of any emergency purposes. Um, okay. Let's see. Remember, I said I was going to do this black line down here. I 
So it's not not a straight across line, right? It's kind of goes up and down and back up. Do these nostrils. I'm not sure I'll do any more of the lines on the side of his face. I'll just let that stay for now. God, he looks quite sad. <laughs> How did I do that? His eyes look a little bit dead right now because of the reflections gone and just the way that I've painted it, so... When we put a reflection back in there, it will... brings... reanimate him. Just gonna paint that out. This is definitely a tough, I know I'm thinking about it, a tough expression to do, the smirking kind of thing. Because it's it does border on the on a few different other emotions.
Yeah, let's put the the light back into his eyes so it's not so disturbing. So let's take a little bit of white. I got this like the this blue that we were using earlier. A little white blue that those reflections, so I'll take that. Definitely in the smile. I think the eyes are much closer. That needs to come up. So. So often, I mean, this is something that I sometimes do is paint the eyes too open. So I'm just sort of painting them down uh, or uh, adding a little bit of because those eyes are really cl closed, right? They're really he's really got a deep smile on it is really so painting his eyes closed a little bit more will help so this is just the first part of that correction down here and going to continue oh he looks so sad <laughs> Oh, poor Nelson Mandela. What have I done? Okay, so a couple little adjustments there. Uh, 
Uh, I'm gonna take my dark color again and just integrate these lines that I, I put down or the as I brought the eyelids up a bit. Okay, how much, <laughs> um, <laughs> Donna says, my granddaughter likes your mustache, uh, and she says, uh, your Nelson Mandela may look sad, but he did have a hard life. <laughs> uh, where's that? What's going on? Come on. Hmm. There we go. So I think a few things, and I wonder if I can, f if it's too late to fix any of this. One of which is his face is a little bit rounder than in the original. Um, and it makes me think like I could try to shave a little bit of that part of his face in a bit. Do I just leave it? That is so hard to say. It's I, I don't like leaving a painting that I'm not super happy with, but we've been this is going on a little bit longer than I'd like. Um You know what I'm noticing? So what I see is part of what, why that's happening is I want these eyelids right now. They they're sort of like bowl shaped, like how to, and I want them to be one's concave or convex. I can never remember which is the right one, but let's go in. And I know it's I'm taking longer than I want, but I can't live with myself if I don't. Uh, do this and this is, might be helpful for some people who might be dealing with similar sort of issues in their own painting so let's look here I'm gonna bring let's get a bit of white on there so it can hide Because it makes him less sad there. Just those. I mean, obviously, this color needs to be integrated, but. 
It's also that mouth. I'm afraid to make it go too much wider because it might look a little bit funny, but let's just So some of these, what I'm doing is at really kind of exaggerating some of these folds on his face, and that's going to bring a little bit more of the, the smile lines in here. Okay, so let's now just take some of this kind of um, pink color that we had earlier. Needs a bit more warm red in there. <laughs> uh, the subtle thing the human face right that little tiny changes in our expression can really change how people interpret our emotions right like that because it's starting to look like he's looking off to the side and I don't want that obviously Let's just paint that out
Okay. Got most of it in there. I think that top lip needs to be a little bit darker. So let's glaze that, and then I think I gotta call it an afternoon. So taking my dark color, got a little bit of glaze on it. Mm hmm see that eye I keep thinking makes me look like makes me think he's looking off to the side I don't like that at all I'm going to put this dot much closer. There we go. Now he feels like he's looking both eyes in the same direction. Um...
Okay, am I done? Am I, can I walk away? I don't think it's gonna, oh, a button. I'm missing a button down there. Okay, I gotta go. Oh, uh, wow. I can't believe I've been on so long. I didn't even realize. Which is good. You know, sometimes just... <laughs> uh, okay. So... What is today? just I, 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 part of me just wants to keep on tinkering, and the, the, the more that I tinker, I think the, I, it will get better, because I'm, what's happening in that, that process is that I'm noticing little things that I hadn't seen before, because I was looking at the big picture, and slowly I'm narrowing my focus, and you could see, like, I'm seeing, like, oh, now I notice a little bit of blue here, where I didn't notice blue before, and you just keep on noticing more and more things and as you paint those things in painting it's more and more and more and more specific right and then obviously gets closer and closer and closer to the original and so it just sort of depends on your on 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 how specific you want to get right personally i'm i'm pretty satisfied with that um and i i don't it, I don't. I can walk away from it here. <laughs> um, okay, so in a couple of days, we're going to be looking at Marcel Ferran, and she is or, or was one of the great artists, uh, Quebec artists, uh, francophone artists um, in Canadian history, a more relatively recent um, artist, and she's she has a very diverse body of work. On Wednesday evening, we're going to be doing our first paint arcade painting. We're going to be making a painting about based on one of the characters from Fortnite. And then on Thursday, we're going to be painting a Philip Guston painting. Philip Guston is one of the towering figures, uh, often seen as an American artist, but was born in Montreal. Um, although it was an Anglophone from Montreal, so next week is our, our bit of a Quebec week. And then, uh, and then the following week, we're doing our Van Gogh week. So um, there's plenty of stuff for people of various different interests over the next few, um, the next few weeks and months. And as I said, 
here's the stack of, of uh, the outlines going forward. You can see, actually, here we go. Here's, it gives you an idea of what we're doing. This is the Philip Gustin. There's a couple of Philip Gustin paintings that we'll be looking at. Oh, and then here's Attila Richard Lukacs. I forgot about him. I think that's maybe next weekend. I'm doing a lot of these bonus episodes. Well, um, mostly because I know once September hits, I'm going to be very busy. And I won't have a lot of an opportunity to uh, do those extra things. So I want to try it in the summer here. Even though I've got other things I should also be doing. Um, it just brings me a lot of satisfaction to do this. So I'm taking advantage. The, the, there's parts of me taking advantage of other parts of me in my free time. Where I, should, I could be sitting on a beach somewhere. Um, but I've decided that this is how I like spending my time. And... Because isn't it so satisfying when you've got these done and you see dozens of them sitting on your shelf? Or in my case, I've got boxes now of all these paintings. We're on almost painting 100 now. And there's another 30 there ready to... It's just that sense of satisfaction for me just keeps growing and growing and growing. And I know people are asking to see more of my artwork. And really this is becoming an artwork for me this whole you know i've been talking to a couple of museum directors and about possibly exhibiting all of the paintings we've made so far um and then doing some artwork in response to their collections um because this has gone just it's gone from just a teaching some online lessons to something much larger and, a, and a, a major part of my life and becoming part of my art practice in in a way I didn't expect right so that's what's always fun about just you start an adventure and you don't really know where you're going to end up right so I feel better about I feel I feel good about that now so sometimes you know it's you just got to put the original to the side and yeah you know I'll always be comparing and thinking about it but now this will be um, how I think of Nelson Mandela, right? A happy guy. Maybe there's a little bit of sadness in that smile, um, as there should be, as uh, Donna rightly pointed out there. He did have quite the hard life. Um, but what an inspiration. So, you know, lastly, you know, part, um, well, certainly if you want to leave a contribution, there's PayPal links below. There's uh, if you want to send a check or money order, um, that would be I'd be very grateful for any support that you might be able to provide uh, to continue this journey together. And then lastly, uh, this time really lastly, thinking just put that idea of Nelson Mandela and uh, the the his his life goal to bring people together to celebrate diversity to um, work for reconciliation which is reconciliation is really one of the most difficult things uh, that humans can do with one another right and it often requires but not always. It often requires two people on different sides to find some sort of common ground. But not always. Sometimes you have to go a little bit further across the street to meet that other person who is holding on to some anger and bitterness. And so the, the, I think the lesson that I take away from that is thinking about in my own life, who can I forgive? Who can I... Um, whose point of view can I try to understand, right? People who I disagree with fundamentally about some issues. Does my anger and my hate, does that really benefit me? Does, or, or even, you know, the people around me and my community, or can I um, just take just a small little bit of part of my day to... Or, or over over the rest of this day, the hours that are remaining, just to think a little bit about why they believe what they believe, and because maybe they're not evil demons sent from hell, but maybe they are. They 
they want the best for themselves and their family as well, but they just have a slightly different way of expressing that. Um, and I think just trying to understand one another is a great way of, of the beginning, the healing process. And, and as I said, there, I think we're, we all could use a little bit of healing and a little bit of patience and understanding in our lives. So that's my little bit of, of rant to end the day. So just that if we take one little step together, and we all take one little step together, then we would actually move, you know, as a culture, a, a giant leap forward, right? Okay, everyone, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so much for painting along with me again. Uh, we'll see you in a couple of days. It's been a fun little weekend. I got to spend uh, a couple extra hours with you over the weekend. Um, and uh, I look forward to spending more time. We'll take care. We'll see you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon.